Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed footsteps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Will be accepted on my altar. 
for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Romans. I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercies shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting at us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who creates, redeems, and sanctifies all things. Amen. Today's Gospel is a tough one, and it's tough in a lot of ways. There is a misogynistic edge to Jesus' words, both in initially dismissing this woman who is simply seeking health and wholeness for her daughter, and then in suggesting that helping her would be like throwing his children's food to the dogs. And so before he met this woman, did Jesus really think that his mission would only be to the lost sheep of the house of Israel? rather than to the wider world? Or was it all a trick, an opportunity for this woman to prove her faithfulness to Jesus, though potentially at the expense of her daughter? And that raises the question, which is tough for some, of whether Jesus, the son of the unchangeable, immutable God, might need to or even be capable of changing his mind. From time to time, changing his mind from time to time, or taken a step further, is Jesus really telling us that healing or response to prayer or even salvation is something that can be earned through persistence or cleverness? After hearing this story, I have heard people utter, that's not the Jesus I know. And honestly, at least at first glance, I can't really blame them. But there's a particular aspect of this story that might be helpful as we sit with its more frustrating facets. And that is the identity of this woman. We really don't know much about her, not her name nor her station in society, nothing about her family, save that 
she has a demon-possessed daughter. All we really know is that she was persistent when it came to her sick daughter and that she was a Canaanite. So what is a Canaanite? Well, at one level, it could simply be a term indicating that she was an outsider or unclean. But in terms of the biblical narrative, the story gets much more complex. Biblically speaking, Canaan was actually one of Noah's grandsons who was cursed to perpetual slavery because after the flood, his father Ham looked upon Noah naked. Much later in Israel's narrative, the land of Canaan was promised to Abraham by God. And eventually the land would represent the hope of the Hebrew people led by Moses through the wilderness. Eventually, Moses would look out on the land of Canaan from the verge of the Jordan River just before dying. And then Joshua would lead the people into the land, defeating the Canaanites. And after that, Canaan is largely referred to in the past tense as a defeated nation. So the Canaanites were one of the historical enemies of the nation of Israel, while the land of Canaan became the land of Israel and took on the character of the land of promise. Archaeology and, and history mirror this story of Canaan to some extent, though it is a still more complex story. But suffice to say, Canaan was a geopolitically significant culture in the late Bronze Age, but by about 500 years before Christ, Canaanites were at most an ethno-linguistic minority, or even just a term used for a merchant class characterized by non-monotheistic beliefs that had been subsumed into whichever conquering nation ruled the day. In Mark's version of this story, she's referred to as the Syrophoenician woman, which might more accurately describe the mix of culture and empire that would have influenced a person of Canaanite ancestry by Jesus' time. Well, so what? Well, by some accounts, there wasn't even such a thing as a Canaanite in that era. So Matthew's choice to call this woman a Canaanite is significant. It adds a mystical, spiritual, and even satirical edge to this story. Jesus has done no signs, no healings in this region. So her appearance there before him and his disciples is as a character out of time, out of context. She is a surprise, a ghost visiting from their collective history, who nonetheless demands healing. And if we consider the history of Canaan, she is a ghost connected to the very moment after the flood that humanity again falls short of God's hopes, causing bitter division, a ghost that forces these children of Israel to recall the defining event in their own history, their own triumphal entry into the promised land as a conquering nation. And for just a moment, at least, to experience that event from the perspective of the conquered. It's a point driven home by the fact that, ironically enough, this is all happening under the rule of another invading empire, the Romans, who had been in power for generations. This ghost brings with her a heavy burden. And Jesus' response is almost humorous. Upon recognizing the weight of the history this woman brings with her, he says, oh, oh no, we're not digging that up again. Make her go away. Jesus even tries to turn a blind eye, as if by pretending not to see her, she might actually just go away. But this apparition is not content to merely rattle her chains. Often, the, often in the Gospels, 
It is the strangers, the outsiders, the ones who are nameless to history that teach us the true nature of things. So could it be that when this Canaanite who shouldn't and couldn't know the truth of Jesus kneels and calls him Lord and has the audacity to correct him, could it be that Jesus is learning too, beginning to take on the full weight of the healing he must do, not just of the demon who torments today, or even of the scattered house of Israel, but of injustices that stretch all the way back to the damp shores after the flood and beyond, of confounding rifts between people and nations and God that are forgotten to history, but whose scars remain. And could it be that in this woman, Jesus recognized that the yoke of his labor suddenly felt much heavier and caused even the Son of God to falter for a moment. Well, maybe. And I don't want to completely explain away the frustrating aspects of this story. We need to sit with Jesus' challenging language from time to time. But I also recognize that given some of the history I've read into this story, that it's hard not to hear some of the news of our own day in it. Whether it's the history of racial injustice in this country and the voices that continue to cry out for change, or a pandemic that is changing and scarring and dividing us in ways that we cannot yet begin to imagine. Each an intricate issue with an even more complex history. But perhaps what we can take from the story of the Canaanite woman is this that when Jesus heals, it is never simply about fixing the presenting issue, but about the wholeness of the person. In this case, he frees this woman's daughter from a demon that tormented her. But you know, none of the demons I know rest in one generation of a family. And I wonder, I wonder whatever this demon was, if it had been part of her family for generations, stretching through empire, through victory and defeat and slavery, through all the generations going back to Noah. Jesus doesn't say the demon is removed or cast out, but rather that the daughter is healed. It is through her wholeness that this ancient demon no longer holds any sway. And perhaps that is Jesus' call to us, to seek wholeness in ourselves and to foster wholeness in others, recognizing that each of us carries the weight of our own history and that it is only through wholeness that ancient demons can be put to rest. May it be so. Amen.
us pray to our Savior, saying, Christ, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the day of your coming, we pray to you, O Christ. For the mission of the Church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth, we pray to you, O Christ. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, we pray to you, O Christ. For those who suffer from the injustice of racism, for those who raise their voices to demand justice for people of color, and for the wisdom and courage to work for positive change in this country and beyond, we pray to you, O Christ. For those who fought for justice for the LGBTQ community, for those who continue the struggle, for those for whom justice is still denied, and for those who can freely rejoice in their LGBTQ identity, that we may be ever mindful of our commitment to justice, inclusion, and welcome. We pray to you, O Christ. For those in positions of public trust, that they may serve justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person, we pray to you, O Christ. for a blessing upon human labor and for the right use of the riches of creation, that the world may be freed from poverty, famine, and disaster. We pray to you, O Christ. For all those who are struggling because of COVID-19 and for all those who are working to ease their suffering, we pray to you, O Christ. For the poor, the persecuted, the sick, and all who suffer, for those who tend to them, for refugees, prisoners, and all who are in danger, that they may be relieved and protected, we pray to you, O Christ. For this church, that we may be delivered from hardness of heart and show forth your glory in all that we do. We pray to you, O Christ. For ourselves, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for the grace of the Holy Spirit to amend our lives, we pray to you, O Christ. For all who have commended themselves to our prayers, especially Anne Case, the Callahan family, the Dapkowitz family, Kevin Sparrow, Ben Day, Karen Smith, Chris Buxenbaum, Diana Bartlett, Matthew Mole, Chuck and Mary Sue Wiley, Andy, Calvin, Nate, Bill, and Mary, and those you are holding in your own heart. For our families, friends, and neighbors, that being freed from anxiety, they may live in joy, peace, and health. We pray to you, O Christ. For all who have died in the communion of your church, remembering especially Mark Egan and those we remember in our hearts this morning, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that with all the saints, they may have rest in that place where there is no pain or grief, but eternal life. We pray to you, O God. Rejoicing in the fellowship of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. For yours is the majesty, O Creator, Redeemer, and Holy Spirit. Yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Amen.
go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve God rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. And the blessing of God who creates, redeems, and sanctifies all things be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen.